One of the hardest things about doing the show is actually, believe it or not, the lighting. This is a very dark room normally, um, so we actually got better lights to try and illuminate the place. Lighting can change everything. For example, look at the official pictures the CW released of The Flash versus the leaked set photos of The Flash. Night and day. So, I forgot it was St. Patrick's Day this week. Had I remembered, I probably would have discussed Long Halloween Chapter 6 last week instead of talking about Quantum and Woody. But then again, I am filming this on St. Patrick's Day, so... I guess I'm not late? Yeah, let's go with that. So yeah, we're back to Long Halloween and Chapter 6, St. Patrick's Day. It's now March, and now Harvey Dent and Lieutenant Gordon are still no closer to catching the holiday killer than they were at the start of the story. Their two prime suspects are Sal Maroney, who's been noticeably vying for Carmine Falcone's place as leader of the Mafia, and Bruce Wayne, whose father had ties to Carmine Falcone's father way back when. And what does Batman think of all this? Well, he hasn't been really doing a lot of thinking on his own recently. See, last issue we found out that Poison Ivy has placed him under her control. And this issue we finally find out what her plans are. In the first chapter of the story, we see Bruce Wayne go to great pains to try to prevent Carmine Falcone imports from placing their money in the Gotham City National Bank. He even went so far as to threaten the president of the bank at the time to make sure Falcone's money stays out. But here we see him tell the board that he's had a change of heart, all due to Ivy's influence. But don't worry, Catwoman shows up and helps make Bruce Wayne feel all better. Not like that. Now, I was asked a while back what I thought about Poison Ivy hanging out at Wayne Manor and not finding out that he's Batman or finding the Batcave. And to be honest, I don't really think that was on her mind at the time. As we find out in this chapter, she was actually paid to manipulate Bruce and have him change his mind about the bank situation. So to her, she was just doing her job and having a little fun, as seen by the dinner scene. To her, she probably wasn't paid enough to do anything more, like snooping around for, like, blackmail stuff. Also, she's not a mind reader, she's more of a seducer and persuader. But getting back on topic, she was paid to do this? Well, yeah, why would she care if Falcone was using the Gotham City Bank or not? So somebody in the family must have paid her to get Bruce to change his mind. And somebody in the family did. That somebody was Carmine. <gasps> this is the tipping point, folks. This is where we see that Falcone can't do this alone anymore. Between Batman and Holiday, he finally realizes that maybe the only way to defeat a freak is with another freak. Speaking of Holiday, he, or she, takes out five of Maroney's men. There's going to be a big confrontation between Falcone's men, led by his recently paroled daughter Sophia, and Maroney's men at Maroney's safe house. But Holiday gets to them first, and leaves a nice little leprechaun statue. Now things are getting interesting. The freaks are starting to infiltrate the old guard in a way that can't go ignored for too long. We start to see cracks show in Batman's tough, all-knowing exterior. The unstoppable, all-knowing detective has just been made somebody's puppet, and the first signs of doubt are starting to surface. Dent and Gordon are starting to fall apart too. We see Gordon's wax nostalgic about his time in Chicago, while Dent starts to hint again that he's okay with these people wiping each other out. We've crossed the halfway point and now I'm starting to see the other side of the mountain, folks. Just wait until next time when things get really interesting. Until then, as always, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, talk to me on Facebook or Twitter in the comments, let me know how you feel about this story, and share with your friends and your enemies too for that matter. Just let the world know that Two brothers like to talk nerdy shit every other day. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Before we get started, I feel like I should warn you all that today's episode, I will be recommending a book where, in the second issue, the main characters accidentally touch dicks. So, I'll start. Okay. <laughs> Lola Bunny or Rabbit? Bunny. From, really? Uh, from Space Jam.